Hello, I'm Lauren McCafferty, and I'm an ultrasound fellow at University Hospital's Cleveland Medical Center. I'm doing a series on the use of point of care ultrasound to augment landmark based procedures. And in this video, I'll be talking about using ultrasound for peritonsillar abscesses, focusing on a submandibular approach. Just a quick disclaimer I'm going to be focusing on the ultrasound component of this and spending less time on the procedure or the drainage itself. Why use ultrasound for this? As with most things with point of care ultrasound, it's readily available. You can perform it quickly at the bedside. This is especially important if the patient is unstable and has impending airway compromise. Ultrasound also improves the accuracy of the physical exam. Um, one of the more traditional ways of diagnosing PTAs is by a clinical diagnosis. This was a study looking at the diagnostic accuracy of the physical exam for PTAs, and it was performed by otolaryngologists, so ENT docs. They found a sensitivity of 78% and specificity of 50%. This isn't great, especially considering that this is their area of expertise. I would imagine that um, the diagnostic accuracy of emergency physicians would be uh, lower than this. So something to consider. Using ultrasound um, potentially avoids CT, which can reduce radiation exposure, something to consider, especially in kids, young adults, um, pregnant uh, patients, but really anyone. This also reduces the need for contrast. Um, you typically require labs before obtaining the CT, and this is also important uh, to consider in patients with contrast allergies. And furthermore, CT often, as we all know, takes time and costs money for the patient, so ultrasound can potentially save on both. And while CT is 100% sensitive, as the previously mentioned study showed, its specificity is only 75%, so it's not a perfect test, even though uh, a lot of people might think it is. And as a result of this, ultrasound can expedite management and disposition. And finally, ultrasound is useful not only for diagnostic purposes, but can also guide and confirm drainage, which CT can't do. There's two main approaches for the use of ultrasound for PTAs, the first of which is transoral, which is the more commonly employed and better studied technique. This involves placing um, an endocavitary probe into the patient's mouth directly over the affected area. It's demonstrated high sensitivity, but has several disadvantages. Um, for one, it involves the endocavitary probe, which isn't nearly as widely available as the other probes. This may be uncomfortable for the patient as it's placed directly over the abscess itself. It also may be difficult to perform, particularly if the patient has trismus. And it's also difficult to perform dynamic ultrasound-guided drainage with the endocavitary probe, as you have to put both the probe and the needle and syringe into the patient's mouth at the same time. So not ideal. The transcutaneous route, which is what I'll be focusing on and describing in the next few minutes, is less common and less studied than the transoral approach, but has promising utility. This was one of the few studies on this approach. Um, it was prospective, looking at the diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound, including the transcutaneous route for PTA as well as cellulitis. They found that the transcutaneous route had a, sense, a specificity of 93% and an 80% sensitivity. But in cases of severe trismus, this approached 100%. This approach tends to be less invasive, easy to do, not affected by trismus, and drainage tends to be easier as the probe stays externally while you approach drainage intraorally. So you don't have to put the probe and the needle and syringe into the patient's mouth. For technique, you'll use a linear or curvilinear probe, whichever you prefer and dependent on how deep the structures are. You'll place the probe just below and parallel to the mandible with a probe marker pointing toward the patient's ear. 
and the probe itself directed superiorly and posteriorly. The view you're going to get is essentially an upside down view. As structures near the top of the screen are more inferior on the patient, while those at the bottom are more, are more superior. On the right of this screen is more anterior and slightly medial, whereas structures on the left of the screen are more posterior and lateral. Once you have the probe in this position, evaluate the anatomy. Here, the posterior aspect of the tongue is the smooth echogenic structure on the right, far right of the screen, kind of in the middle. And then in the center of this screen, you see a relatively well circumscribed low level echogenic structure with some striations. This is a normal tonsil. Um, these tend to be around one to two centimeters in size. They're triangular or oval shaped. If inflamed, these will increase in size and you may see more prominent tonsillar crypts. But this here is a normal appearing tonsil. Um, there's no surrounding fluid collection, and if you do see a fluid collection, it may be kind of surrounding the tonsil and you can still see the tonsil fairly well, or it may completely obstruct the, a good view of the tonsil itself. Once you look at the tonsil in the immediate area surrounding it, you also want to kind of identify your vessels, so especially your carotid just so that you know where um, that is in relation to the tonsil, especially if you're going to stick a needle and drain the fluid. And as always, kind of fan through this entire area to make sure that you don't miss anything. Compare the previous image to this one where you can't really see a clearly defined tonsil, and instead there's a fairly well-defined fluid collection right here in the center of the screen. Whenever you see anything abnormal, it helps to apply color Doppler. This will help better characterize uh, the structure that you're looking at. So one, it will make sure that it's not a vessel itself, whether it's an aneurysm or a pseudoaneurysm or even just a normal vessel. And two, it can help you figure out if this is a lymph node or is this an abscess? And if it is an abscess, it will help you know where the vessels may be in relation to the fluid, uh, which is important when you plan to stick a needle or scalpel into it. It also helps to compare the affected side to the unaffected side, which is presumably normal. You may see something that looks a little different than what you're used to seeing on most of your patients, and it may in fact just be the patient's anatomy. So this will help you know um, if this maybe is a true abscess versus just a normal variant. In addition to diagnosis, ultrasound can also help with drainage. So you can perform either static versus dynamic ultrasound guided drainage. So static is where you use ultrasound to identify the fluid and the structures, and then you would approach um, drainage just as you normally would without ultrasound. You just kind of use ultrasound to identify where the fluid pocket, the biggest fluid pocket is, versus dynamic where you're actually visualizing on ultrasound the needle as it enters the fluid collection. Um, so this is kind of what we're typically, how we're typically used to using ultrasound for procedures. For dynamic ultrasound guided drainage, you'll place your probe in the submandibular position on the outside of the patient, just like I talked about before. And then you'll approach drainage intraorally with your syringe and needle, just like you normally would. You may need to adjust your probe in order to better visualize the needle. And one way to do this before you even start poking the patient is to keep your needle cap on the needle and lightly touch the area of the PTA where you plan to drain and watch your screen and you'll see that hyperechoic needle kind of coming into view, even with a cap in place. And that will give you an idea of how to angle your probe and what adjustments you need to make in order to maintain good visualization of your needle. And this is what it will look like when you're actually performing the procedure. You can see the needle is coming into view from the right side of your screen, kind of heading horizontally toward the left. You can see it entering that fluid collection. You want to have good 
control and visualization of your needle as you're doing this. Once in the fluid, you'll aspirate just as you normally would. Once you've completed the drainage or think you've completed the drainage, you can use ultrasound to confirm that you achieved maximal aspiration of the fluid and no significant amount remains. And you can do this whether or not you used ultrasound to guide the drainage or even diagnose the PTA. It's useful no matter what. Some pearls and pitfalls. Know your anatomy. If you aren't sure of what you're seeing or you're just not familiar with this scan in general, you could easily confuse normal anatomy with an abscess or other abnormality. You really don't want to stick a needle in a vessel or normal tonsil or other structure if you can avoid it. Use the opposite side for comparison. Especially if the anatomy looks odd in one way or another, it helps to compare to what's presumably a normal um, normal anatomy. It may just be the patient's anatomy is slightly different than what you're used to seeing. Just because you're using ultrasound doesn't mean you should abandon your usual safeguards, uh, such as um, having safety buffers like cutting the cap on your needle or putting tape on the scalpel to prevent from advancing too far. You still want to do all of those things. Ultrasound is just there to, to further help you. And since it takes another hand to hold the probe, have someone else assist you. This could be the patient, this could be a nurse, med student, your attending, whoever. Um, just know that this isn't the easiest to try to do alone. And know your limitations. Like most of ultrasound, it's operator dependent. If you don't know what you're doing or what you're supposed to be looking at or for, ultrasound is probably not going to be very helpful. Now for some take-home points. Ultrasound is useful for really any suspected PTA. It's not invasive, it's readily available, particularly if you're doing um, a submandibular approach, and there's really no harm in doing it. You can potentially have a diagnosis within minutes. Remember, however, that it's a better roll-in test than roll-out test, but in patients with severe trismus or larger abscesses, the diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound improves significantly. Ultrasound has the potential to avoid CT, which, has, which is beneficial, um, as I talked about before, and has also been shown to reduce the need for ENT consultation. In addition to diagnostic purposes, ultrasound is also useful for ultrasound-guided drainage, whether it's static or dynamic, and can also be used post-drainage to confirm that the fluid was successfully aspirated. So overall, ultrasound can help expedite management, save on time and cost, and improve patient care. It's a great tool to know how to use and apply, and I encourage you to try this for the next patient that you see with suspected PTA. That's all for now. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you.